system review time and apologies if you can hear your fan noise and random people talking it's hot I've got the window open and the fan blowing so <clears throat> I got this the LDK game I don't know what LDK stands for it is basically a cheap Chinese handheld emulation system it's very much in the mold of the RS 97 that I reviewed a few months ago um, I'm not going to tell you the specs of it partly because I don't know and partly because I don't care unless you're the kind of person who does um, software development on these kind of things it just really doesn't matter from the perspective of a gamer what matters is what can it do and that's what I'm going to show you um, first we'll just have a look at the physical well size of the thing it's I don't have particularly big hands and look at that it's dinky um, let me compare it just give me a moment I'm going to go and get an RS 97 to put next to it that that gives you an idea as, assuming you're familiar with how big an RS 97 is because you might not be it's uh, I can give you a better idea Game Boy Color yeah that's that's really showing it now it's like a bit a, a bit more than half the size of a Game Boy Color so um, you can you can get a clue it's small um, button wise you've got your four face buttons you can see them there start select d-pad micro SD card slot um, two buttons that it's like take your best guess what they are generally that one is the uh, brightness button you just keep pressing it and the brightness goes up until it goes down and then you start all over again you cycle through it that button is sometimes a reset button on the software sometimes it's not it depends on the software um, this is what I say when I what I mean when I say take your best guess you've got shoulder buttons that was good I'll, I'll just hold it off the screen so you can <laughs> <laughs> see how well they work yeah shoulder buttons um, micro USB AV out uh, power on and off volume uh, and down to turn the volume up because yeah reasons I guess um, speaker battery seeing these a lot in um, handheld things just lately micro SD card that being there is relevant uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later and pleasingly you can open it without a screwdriver and you can put the thing back on if you put it on the right way so, oh and it's turned on um, I didn't actually intend to do that but here we are with it turned on so it when I say it is like the RS-97, it is like the RS-97 when you have put the custom firmware on it. Which is good, because without the custom firmware, the RS-97 is a bit... But with it, it's great. Uh, this, this is like utilities and stuff on this screen. Um, yeah, lots of reflection. I'm going to have to try and find a better angle for this. Give me a minute. Okay, this is going to be a little bit, it's going to look a bit squashed on your screen bec because it's just decided to turn itself off. Come back on you. It has a, a timer, it'll time out and um, here you are, you can see how quickly it boots. It times out and turns itself off if you're not doing anything, though it seems a little bit unpredictable in how quickly it does that. You can adjust it in settings, I thought I had. I thought the screen would turn off before the power turned off, but... Mm, maybe not um, so various utilities and things I only use a couple of these that one FF play that's a video player it works quite well I've, I've stuck a load of um, films on the micro SD card that are like super mega compressed and don't take much space and look pretty well like YouTube 10 years ago um, 
a music player there other things that really whatever um you use the shoulder buttons to to go through the various uh oh god i can't see it very well so that's consoles and well final burn alpha so arcade as well then you've got games that are dedicated to the system and it is it's based on Linux of some sort. Um, a lot of the same sort of stuff that is on the RS-97. Um, some clones, some ports. King of the Fighters. Overheated, don't know what that is. It's got, um, it's got Quake. Now I imagine you need the WAD for that. Uh, I don't know why they call them WADs, I find that quite weird. Um, but it's got Chocolate Doom on here somewhere as well. I can't... I, I, oh, there it is. Yes, I've, I've got the wad for that. And we'll have a look at that in a minute. I find the choices of um, the icons they use interesting and a bit strange. You cycle through them. It's like, here we are. We've got computers. But we've also got handheld... Like, we've got the links. Um, MAME. It doesn't seem completely logical in their um, categorising of what system goes in what thing, but it's not really a big deal. You soon remember what's in what menu. Um, settings. Really, you can pretty much ignore all of that. You could set the time on it if you want to. I don't know that it entirely keeps great time. And when it doesn't show the time anyway, um, what's the point? Uh, the skins, that's useful, you can change how it looks. Uh, yeah, I've got it, oh, I didn't really want to do that. Yeah, I, I had it on this one for a little while. I can't remember how to get, yeah, there we go. Yeah, and that's kind of cool. It all pretty much looks exactly the same in all of the menus except, well, that one and that one. They've all got the same icons and stuff. But, you know, it's it's nice if you care about things like that. Back to how it was. So, now I'm going to try and find a decent um, angle for the camera and we'll have a look at some of the emulators that are on it because this is where it gets interesting. Okay, then, we'll have a look at some of the emulators on there. I mean, mostly things that you would expect to work well work well Game Boy works well NES works well we'll have a look at the um, Super NES and the Mega Drive and the GBA because they are ones that are some emulator based handhelds that I've used have struggled with um, now there's a couple yeah we've got two different um, SNES emulators dumb SNES uh, I don't get on with that one and Super Snares, we'll have a look at that one. There is only one game I care about trying on this. And if you know me, you'll know what it is. Super Mario Kart, obviously. I'm not sure how well the camera's going to be focusing on this. I'm also not sure how much glare we're going to be getting on the screen. Probably far more than I want. Really, I use this <clears throat> to test SNES emulators because some of them struggle with it and it's a game that I absolutely love. Um, and I'm like, if they can't play this, I don't want to use them. And it's doing pretty well. I don't think it's perfect. I think it's skipping some frames. But I have played um, Mario Kart on some handheld systems, like really, really cheap and nasty ones that it just wasn't playable you know the frame skip was so appalling that it just looked terrible and you struggled to control it and put, the, put, put your cart where you wanted it and hit things with your weapons and all of that this while I don't think it's perfect it's near enough if if it had turned out like this on the snares with this kind of, wow am I playing well or what 
you know, if it had come out like this originally in the day, I think people would have been happy enough. Um, certainly I would. So it's, it's probably doing like, I don't know, rough estimate, probably about 15 to 20 frames a second, something like that. It's not giving you 30. It certainly ain't giving you 60. But whatever, it's good enough. I'm quite happy with that. Now, can I remember how to get out of that? No, don't do that. Don't do that either. How about that? There you go. That is one of the quirks of this system. Um, different... Um, it's not standardised. What button does what to exit an emulator or whatever. Um, like this one. Well, you press the side button to get out of the game and then the start button to get out of the emulator. Confusing much? Yes. I would say so. It was the same with the RS-97, and you can't blame the makers of the hardware for that, because they didn't make the emulators, and the people making the emulators were all, like, different teams, different groups of people or whatever, um, not working in unison, not creating some unified design philosophy in terms of what button does what, so, you know... That's just the way these things work. We'll have a look at the Mega Drive. I want to look at Sonic because, well, you just have to, don't you? Sounds okay so far. Because it is, it's all about the sound and how quickly does it play. That sounds bang on. I mean, after that, um, that joysticky thing that I played the other day, which sounded god awful and slow, listen to that. And it's, we'll, we'll actually play the thing. It's lovely. That's all you need to know. It's lovely. So we'll bang out of that. If we can remember what button it is. Is it any of these? I saved the state there. I didn't really want to do that because <laughs> you can save states on some of these emulators I just don't know how um, B to folder up now I wanted to look at oh it's what it's a cotton game what the hell cotton is it edit fast forward something panorama cotton that's what I'm looking for there we go because I've heard this one is quite tricky to emulate. I know it's really fancy to play. Yeah, okay. Don't care about any of this, just want to play. Don't know what that was. Something about when you get down near the ground, when we can see some ground. Oh, that's looking fine to me. Apparently some emulators just completely mangle this. Uh, this does not appear remotely mangled to me. Got no idea what's going on, but it's not mangled. I love this game. Okay. Um, I don't expect this to work. Now, I know the emulator, yeah. The emulator here is Pico Drive, which traditionally can run 32x, and uh, yeah, technically it can do it. But um, in terms of playability, forget it. It can't even get through the intro sequence. <laughs> That's not going to happen. Okay, we'll just get out of that. Now, what else was I going to look at? Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll have a look at Game Boy Advance. Then we're going to come back to that. There are a lot of computer emulators on here. 8-bit... Um, 
16-bit Atari ST I haven't tried that a lot of these I haven't tried yet they will work at least as well as they did on the um, RS-97 BBC Micro let's just see now the thing the thing with this is you've got to configure it for the controls. Some of them will use standard con what did I just put in? I think I put in the wrong game. Oh yeah, I put in the wrong game. This I think should work without ha me having configured the controls. Yes, it does. And oh my god, it's loud just like my real BBC. Bloody loud. There's the fire button. Too loud! Too... Yeah. Slightly overdriving the audio a bit there. But I love... This is one of my... Well, I had it on the Electron still have it on the Electron and I, I love it, it's one of the best arcade style games on there. Um, there are other games that I prefer to play but I haven't got them configured on here, Starship Command mainly. Um, I love that game and I will get that configured so I can play it on here. But there we go, let's, let's bang out of that if I can work out how. Mm. Yeah. DOSBox, MAME, MAME works, I think I've told that one where the ROMs are, yes, um, s some of these games need like a sound uh, sample set and I haven't worked out where you're meant to put them, so like uh, Astro Blaster. I love that game and I, I want to be able to play it with the sound. You need the sound and I haven't got it on here. So, uh, but I know it does sound great on, well, relatively. Uh, it's all relative. The speaker on here, I have to say, is really impressive. Volume. This is where I find out that I've actually got the brightness down too low on this. I'm, I'm looking at the camera screen now and thinking that's a bit dim. Oh well. Yeah, so MAME works. Um, it's a version of MAME, like a, an old version of MAME where you, you've got to find exactly the right ROM set. You try and play anything recent and it's just going to spit it out and say no chance mate. But then it's the same with uh, Final Burn Alpha, which is on here. Uh, that's not what I want. That's what I want. And what is left and right to exit. Okay. It is nice when it tells you what you do to exit. So, uh, yeah, Final Burn Alpha is, is very similar in that it's um, arcade games. It's on, yeah, this screen. There are two different versions, and I don't know what the difference is. Um, and I haven't got proper ROM sets here. I've got a load of stuff on there like Neo Geo ROMs that just plain don't run on it. It says, oh, this is too old or something. Um, so you have to find the right ROM sets. But the thing I really want to show you now is this. PlayStation, PS1. Because I didn't even try this on um, the RS-97, but I thought I'll give it a go on here. Because, why not? I was going to show you the GBA, wasn't I? Well, I'm not going to now. Take it from me, it works, and it works just fine. We're looking at PlayStation. <laughs> uh, when I find it. There it is. Because this surprised me. Now, this has been described as, like, proof of concept. It's not... It's not great, it's definitely not running at full speed. And 
I tried a whole bundle of games and only got these three to play at all. But the fact is... No, that's not what we wanted to do. That's what we wanted to do. There is an option here to load up your save state, but I'm not sure what it is. And I'll, I'll just know if I push a button I'm going to do something silly, like... Ah, oh well. Because I saved it having completed mm, almost the whole game. I had to race the yellow car and then race the black car. And I was only able to do that, I think, because this is not running at full speed. It's... Yeah, it's probably running at about half speed. But it is the kind of thing where if you were sitting somewhere on a bus, on a train, something like that, bored, felt like playing something... I don't know. A little bit more visually impressive than some of the other stuff that's on here. While it's not full speed, it is actually still playable. It's still, it's still an enjoyable game. The fact that it's slow, well, if you're a, if you're a player like me, you'll appreciate the lack of speed. <laughs> um, the frame rate is still, um, it, it's quite smooth. I imagine. Oh, look at that! I think I've spat on my screen. I imagine if you could get at the frame skip on this, and I don't know if you can or not, um, you could have the game running at full speed. You just have... it wouldn't be as smooth. I like it like this. Well, look at that, because I'm not using the brake. I, I don't do drifting. I normally brake going round the corners, or coming into the corners, so that I don't lift off or whatever. Brake and accelerate at the same time is the way to slow down and not do any of that silly drifty nonsense. Don't like it, don't want it. Yeah, but um... Oh, I don't want to do that. Want to want to get out of the emulator. Can't remember how. Ah, okay. Oh, and here's how we load and save. You do start and select at the same time. Cool. So, that's that. Just to demonstrate really how slow that is. Crash Bandicoot. So, I've not played Crash Bandicoot much. I'm not really a fan of the game, but I know that it's very popular. I imagine this is not anywhere near full speed. But as someone who's never played it, um, I find this entirely acceptable. You know, I could, I could play this and be quite amused and entertained and stuff. Except, I don't really like the game. Not my kind of thing. But. Oh, that's... Give me that. Yay. You can hear it slowing down. The music gets slower. Unless it... Did it do that on the... You know, on the PS1? Did it slow down? I can't imagine that it would have. Um, but, as you can see, yeah, a bit slow, but still playable. And if you like the game, probably still fun. So, that's all I'm going to look at here, I think, for now. Um, really, I just want to demonstrate that for a tiny little handheld that is cheap, and this is the important thing, right, you can have your, um, you can have your GPDXD and things like that for like 170, 180, 190 quid, whatever they cost, depending on what model you get, and have all your bells and whistles and emulate things that are super powerful, well, 
they're not quite getting onto the Dreamcast yet, things like that. But, um, you know, N64 and all of that. No, they can do the Dreamcast, they can't do your GameCube, that's it, yeah. You're not going to get anything like that on here. But here's the thing. £56. This, it frustrates me actually and annoys me a bit. We get ripped off in Britain. $56 in America, £56 in Britain. But part of that is the pound is being trashed because Brexit, yay. Um, but still, 56 quid, and it will play all of those systems, and it's this small, it's like you can fit it in your pocket, you're not going to be afraid of, well, it's not going to hit your, your bank balance quite so much if you break it, lose it, whatever, where a, a GPDXD, you, you'd be pretty, I'd be upset if I lost this, but you know, you wouldn't be quite so scared carrying it around in your pocket or in your bag or whatever. I do think it's brilliant, to be honest. I like the form factor. I like the size. It's nice and light. It plays a huge variety of um, systems. It What it isn't is a Game Boy. Um, you, I would not give this to a child because they're going to break it and I don't mean physic they might physically break it but emulators being what they are you can get into them you can mess them about you can make them not work anymore and this is the kind of thing that you could make not work anymore if you messed about with it yes you could get it working again you reset all your settings and stuff um but it's the kind of thing I imagine you get if you gave it to a child, they would come back to you within half an hour and say, it's not working, because they've messed about with it. Um, it is an enthusiast's toy. It is a toy, but it's a very good toy. And it's a very good cheap toy. Um, it does require tinkering. And here is the thing. This is the standard firmware. This is how it comes when you buy it, except for the ROMs. It comes without ROMs on it. Um, you have to source your own. Google is your friend. Don't ask me where to get them. I'm not going to tell you. Um, but it being a tinkerer's kind of thing, and this was true of the RS-97 as well. Where the RS-97 came with a standard firmware that was a bit rubbish and you put custom firmware on it and the custom firmware you got was basically what's on this now. This, you can put custom firmware on it and you get something even better. I think you can put the new improved self firmware on the RS-97 as well, but whatever, different story. Haven't tried that. This, I have done it. I have put the custom firmware on another micro SD card. And that is the thing. With the RS-97, when you wanted to put the custom firmware on it, to get at the internal micro SD card, you had to take the thing apart. It was a fiddly, annoying pain in the bum. Where this, take off the battery thingamajig, take out the battery and you can get straight at it. Put a new card in there. Um, I have flashed the new firmware to a new micro SD card and I will be doing another video showing you that firmware in a few days. I want to tinker with that a bit more to show you what that's like. I do think it's better than on here. I'll tell you that now. I do need, I, I, I want to sort out the settings on this, how quickly it turns itself off. I probably adjusted that on the custom firmware and not on this one. Whatever. There it is. It is the LDK game. I think it's brilliant. 56 quid. You might be able to get it cheaper. That's what I paid for it on Amazon. You can probably get it on eBay as well. Absolutely brilliant. Best cheap gaming handheld for emulators. I have come across. Yes, you'll get better if you want to pay more, but if you want something cheap, this is the absolute dog's bollocks. And if you're not English, you'll wonder what the hell I'm talking about. That means it's good. My thanks go to all of my supporters on Patreon, um, without whom I couldn't have bought this. Um, so yeah, huge big thanks to them. Um, 
and thank you for watching. Um, it says here Bedway offers his thanks to those who subscribe to his Patreon account thing. Uh, is that what he needs? <laughs>